Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and let's take a look at a very useful new feature in ZFS, ZFS Rewrite. This lets you rewrite your data in place, which is incredibly helpful after you expand a pool with some new VDEVs or add a special metadata VDEV, enable deduplication, or even just change some parameters on data sets. Something important to note about ZFS Rewrite, it's only for rewriting files, not snapshots or ZVAL block storage. So let's get started on this tutorial. Now I wanna start right here talking about the actual introduction of this command into ZFS because there's a good discussion here. I'll leave a link to it if you want to read all of it, but there's important things you should know before you run this command. And while we can definitely see the motivation and context here for it, and like I said, it's an easier way than just dumping data on and off the pool. It rewrites it in place. There's not a risk of this data being lost. It's not going to change other attributes of the file. That's all great. And that's all documented here. But there's a really big caveat on how this works. One of those things is very specifically around snapshots. And it's spelled out right here. How does this interact with snapshots? If I rewrite everything and have a snapshot, am I now using twice the space? Yes, you are. If you rewrite a block that's in a snapshot, then that snapshot keeps one and you get a new one. This is the block. It's not the files, but you got to remember snapshots are done at a block level. So it will use more space on the pool. This is mentioned in the ZFS rewrite manual. It may not be twice the space. It depends on the properties of the time of the rewrite. So roughly twice the space, but you get the idea. If you're doing this and you're doing block rewrites, snapshots, as they should be, are essentially locked immutable points in time of your data at a block level, not a file level. Therefore, doing this rewrite, even though the file is the same and it's going to be unchanged, it's updating those blocks. That is going to cause a pretty massive expansion if you have a lot of files. Now, this is the ZFS rewrite command. This gives you the different parameters as an option. I want to jump right down here to the notes. Rewrite works by replacing existing block with new block of the same logical size. Change data set properties that operate on the data or metadata without changing logical size will be applied. These include checksum, compression, dedupe, and copies. Changes to properties that affect size and logical block, like record size, will have no effect. So if you modify the data set record size and then apply this to the files in that data set, no change there. But the other things will be changed, such as dedupe and metadata, things I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And one last thing to note, if you're doing this and you're using ZFS send commands, that by default, rewritten blocks update their logical birth time, meaning they will be included in incremental ZFS send streams as modified data, even though they're the same. The files aren't being modified, but the blocks are. But ZFS replication depends on snapshots. Therefore, when the using the dash P command, it will take the rewritten blocks and preserve their logical birth time since there is no user data changes. Now, my reason for going over the notes and highlighting that last part is first, changing the birth time of a block affects ZFS send, but because you're still rewriting the blocks, the snapshot problem I mentioned first is still an issue. You're going to reuse snapshots. We're going to get to the practical and show you that here. But I want to point out that here, using TrueNAS 25.10, latest version available in 2025, the ZFS rewrite command does not support the TAC capital P, the preserve birth time of the block that will let ZFSN not resend all the data. Now, the good news is it is coming in future versions of TrueNAS. I just want to make sure people are aware it's not here now. And if you're wondering about the feature set of the pool, if you do ZPool get all and we're grepping for device rebuild, it is a feature enabled on the pool. It's just not enabled in ZFS rewrite yet. So little nuance there, but it matters in case you're wondering about that command. If you're using a future version of TrueNAS in a future time you're watching this video, it should work. Now, this is our test setup with our pool named testing, our data set named test, and you can see the data that's in there. Let's go ahead and take a snapshot because you see I have no snapshots on it now. And if we take the snapshot, then view the snapshot, expand it out. We're not using anything in that snapshot. We just have the reference data. As you read or write data to this data set, of course, the snapshot will grow. And of course, that includes if we run the ZFS rewrite command. So we run ZFS rewrite, tack RV for recursive and verbose. And we're going to point it at mount testing, the name of the pool, and test, the name of the data set. If we want to do the entire pool, we could do it that way. But we're just going to do this particular data set. All right, it's completed and rewritten those files. And because of that snapshot, we have doubled the amount of storage needed for this data set. If we go to view the snapshot, expand it out, 
you can see we're using exactly that much storage. And I pointed this out to highlight what I mentioned earlier, that each time you run this, these snapshots will grow because it is building new blocks and snapshots are snapshots of the way the blocks were. And of course, if you have your snapshots set to age out and expire, they will expire over time. But please note, this will, until that TAC capital P command comes in, affect your ZFS send jobs as well. Now, a few questions you might have such as, can ZFS rewrite be stopped once it's started? Absolutely. ZFS rewrite can be started and stopped, but it does not pick up where you left off. So each time it's run, it goes through all the files again. Matter of fact, in my snapshot example, if we were to just keep running it and have that snapshot sitting there, because it's a point in time before we ran it, each subsequent run would double up all the data because we're just rewriting blocks, rewriting blocks, and because it sees these block changes, it's going to keep doubling up all the data every time you run it, go through that entire data set. But does it change any of the permissions? This is not a copy command. This is a function of ZFS. So there is no changes made to ownership or ACL permissions. None of that gets changed. So when you run this, you're not at risk of breaking any permissions that may have been painstakingly set up on any of your files. What about data loss? Is there a risk? There's not any real risk of data loss because the rules of ZFS still apply. ZFS is a copy on write file system or cow. Got a whole video where I dive into a lot of the little details around there, but I say no real risk. There is some risk and I found this running this older system. Well, system's not old, but the drives definitely are. They've got about eight years of use on them. And because this is a write intensive operation, I was copying all the data and letting it run for quite a bit just to really put it through its paces. And I found a couple bad sectors on these drives. They would have been found anyways if I was copying data to the drive. But if you are running this because you're really putting some pressure on the drives, if there's a flaw, it may highlight that flaw. But that flaw did not cause me any problems. CFS worked exactly as expected because it doesn't really trust drives and it's designed that way. So if there's a fault, it said, hey, this particular drive, we found a bad sector, but everything's cool. So ZFS works as expected when you're running this, just like it does when you're writing any data to it. So there's not any added risk of any data loss. Hopefully that makes that clear. Let me know if you have questions or comments, leave them down below. Check out my whole playlist on storage and ZFS and TrueNAS that you'll also find linked down below along with that GitHub. Also, check out the TrueNAS T3 podcast. I like giving those guys a shout out. Uh, definitely ask them about ZFS Rewrite because uh, they'll tell you hopefully when it's coming. And I do know it's on their roadmap. I just don't know the date, but uh, like and subscribe to that channel as well because that you can hear right from the developers on things that are happening at TrueNAS and they talk a lot about the ZFS world in general. So I wanted to give them a shout out too. All right, and thanks.